Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This is Fishman Blog number 152, and I thought I'd start this week's video off with the 7 foot tank because I think I have about the right amount of plants in here now. Uh, it leaves it nice and open. Uh, I can see what's going on with the angels. Uh, I am seeing some behavior of pairing off, which is nice. And now that I have the heater in there, the water is warming up. And of course, we just went through a really nice, intense heat wave. Uh, nice is a, probably not an adjective most people would use because it was quite hot. Uh, so that helped as well. And I'm going to keep an eye on them because, well, the tank's clean now. Uh, like I said, got about the right amount of plants. I'm going to probably add another floater besides that hornwort. Probably something along the lines like pearl weed, which is easily uh, pruned by just you know dividing up the clump. And other than that, I'm going to leave this nice and open. Uh, one other thing I might do... Uh, if I start breeding more bristlenose plecos, is put a, a pot in here and, uh, you know, have two breeding colonies instead of just the one. But I'm not sure. I just want to leave this nice and open. The problem with putting, of course, having uh, plecos in here is they may munch on the eggs. So I'm going to just leave it as is for the moment. This is a filter that I have gone back and forth on so many times. I am getting to the point now, I think, where I am going to change how I'm doing uh, my top uh, planters. I have a couple ideas I want to work on. But this one's actually finally looking exactly the way I want it to. Nice and full of uh, horn, well, sorry, java moss mostly. You can see there's duckweed in there, but it stays in here because it's very difficult for it to find a way out. Uh, it's doing all the things it should have done, you know, months ago, but it isn't there now when I'm thinking I'm going to take it all apart. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. Now, you can see that these are two brine shrimp hatcheries I've started up. Uh, every day and a half, I swap them out, and I'm hatching brine shrimp because I am doing a bit of an experiment. I am comparing uh, a whole pile of different aspects of you know small live food for fry, uh, and brine shrimp's obviously a major one for a lot of people, and I want to compare it to uh, growing your own cultures, all the pros and cons, and... I've been doing this now for a couple months, and I want to uh, probably go a little bit longer. I'm not, I don't think it's really necessary. I've been culturing live food forever, and I've hatched brine shrimp on and off uh, uh, quite a bit as well. So I'm going to put a video up, probably not this week coming, but next week. And I want to go over uh, the reasons for each of them, and of course, uh, is there, you know, all the differences. But that will be coming up in a week and a half-ish. As you can see, I've done literally nothing with this, and it is actually, um, well, the reason for me showing you this at this point in time, besides the fact it's a nice jungle, it does tie into another video I'm going to be putting up on Wednesday, and that is uh, when are too many plants, too many plants. I mean, like, when does it get to the point where you have so many plants in uh, a given setup like this, that it becomes detrimental to the fish population. And I'm going to do that for you guys on Wednesday because I have definitely seen it. Um, the actual point at which that becomes an issue is uh, kind of hard to, you know, describe, but I'll do my best and we'll see how that all turns out. As you see, there are still a fair number of guppies in here and also in the top tank, but uh, it's very difficult to actually see what's going on. And I threw this in here simply because uh, they love their chew toys. Uh, not just puppies, but uh, goldfish as well. They'll just go around and they'll nibble on that. And in about two, three minutes, it'll be gone. And uh, I decided uh, I'm not going to breed them for the moment because I just literally have too few uh, ways of dealing, uh, getting rid of, uh, finding homes for, I guess I should say, all the fry that they would have. There's just too many that they have and you raise up you know a couple hundred and it's just impossible to get rid of them so i'm going to go across this is the entire top row of one of the first racks i had set up as you can see there's a lot of uh, baby guppies and what i want to do is get these into their own aquarium i don't want to overcrowd them obviously and of course once they're in uh, a reasonable number in an aquarium it's easier to feed them and I also wanted to show you how these tanks are all doing because I had uh, recently put up a video last week about comparing box filters to underground filters. And now, 
the one I showed you to the left is an underground filter. You can see it's nice and clear and clean. Uh, this is a box filter with a high humidity planter. And this is uh, interesting because this is uh, how the plants are growing. You see the Sabwasser tang is doing really well. And this is another gravel filter, uh, again, roughly the same population of fish, different species, of course. But I find the Sabwasser tang does not do as well in here. Uh, it's not, none of this is definitive. I have nothing against under gravel filters. I think they're wonderful filters. It's just some differences I've noticed. And these sorts of things I like to work at for an extended period of time before I make any kind of decisions with things. Uh, this is one tank that I, I've been running now for a little while. Uh, it is an underground filter to high humidity planter, and it has a lot of quarries and guppies, of course. And it's always a little bit cloudy like that. So I want to switch this one over without doing anything else uh, to a box filter up to the high humidity planter just to see if I can get this kind of clarity. Again, here you see this is uh, some washer tank that's doing really, really well. This is also being filtered by the new version of the leak-proof canister filter, which I will be taking off shortly. So in a, a few weeks, we'll see if that makes a difference. And then this tank here is very stable. Uh, the plants are growing really well. And as you can see in the background, it has an underground filter. There's a great many variables involved in each and every aquarium that you have. That's why I don't like to make uh, snap decisions about changing things around. I just try certain things out, see how it works for a while, and of course, uh, you know, do it for a length of time. Uh, you know, two, three, four, or five months is not enough. Sometimes it takes a couple of years, sometimes even more. And I do want to change over how I'm doing the uh, high humidity planters, not because they don't work, they do really, really well. It's just I want to try something different with uh, this box filter specifically uh, because uh, it's just easier to access. I want an easier access high humidity planter because they do require cleaning. I mean, <laughs> cleaning every couple of years almost, but they do. And if it's a pain to get at, uh, then I kind of head hesitant about doing it and uh, sometimes they go longer than they should. So this is the back end of all those aquariums that I just showed you. And I just wanted to show you the filters here. You can see that uh, there's nothing wrong with any of them. They all work really, really well. And just being uh, probably more picky than I need to be, to tell you the truth. But yeah, this is uh, the, uh, sorry, that's the Guppy and Cory tank. This is obviously the Danio tank. And you can see the filter is still very quite, you know, clean. Uh, there's no issues with it at all as far as that goes. And these are the platies, and everybody's, again, doing really, really well. So, like I said, just keep in mind that they all work, they all do well. I'm just trying to find something that uh, works a little bit better for me. So there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening to my rambling. Uh, leave comments, let me know what you think about everything, and I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.